Well, we've just launched the new salted caramel corn, and I thought what a great opportunity to actually run you through some of the little tips I can give you about corn fishing. Now, the first thing is, and I see it quite a lot um, through coaching and watching people fish, is they struggle to actually like hook the corn and they sort of bury the hook in the corn. You just think, well, actually, there's better ways of doing it. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to hook the corn. Now I'm fishing with a 16 hook today, but obviously another little thing about corn is you can actually fish with big hooks as well, but I'm fishing with a 16 today because I am picking out the little bits of corn. So first thing is obviously get yourself a nice piece of corn. Now if you've obviously got the blunt end, or what I call the blunt end, so it's like the bit where it's cut off, and then you've got the round bit. Now what I like to do, especially when I'm getting lots of bites or just normal day-to-day -day fishing, is hook it down through that round bit like that. So I don't know if you can probably make that out. Now there's plenty of hooks showing. Now obviously when it's really, really tough fishing during the winter, that's how I normally hook it, and that's great for normal pole fishing and also a waggler. And also if you're fishing with like a cage feeder, if you don't want a hair rig, because sometimes you want to be going between each baits. But some I have done in the past when conditions are really, really tough, and it has to be tough for me to do this, to be honest, is actually push the hook down through into that like that. So you actually push it through the cutoff bit so the hook is completely inside the corn. That's what I normally do. When it's tough fishing and I want my first cast, I go out there like that, and it's just that confidence thing that, you know, if they're really tricky to catch, especially like crafty little carp sometimes, just go out there on your first cast like that just to give you that 100% confidence that they're not scared of the hooks. But lovely ways of hooking the corn, keep it nice and simple, and that's always the best way. In the previous little tip about actually how you hook the corn, another, you know, another really important thing that I find in corn fishing is what piece of corn you put on the hook. Now you might think it doesn't make any difference, but believe you me, some of the venues I go to, putting the right size piece of corn on is like chalk and cheese. You go out there, you'll sit there with a great big piece of corn on, sit there and you think there's nothing in your peg. Bring it back, you get one of the little chunky bits out, go out, put it on, and it's absolutely deadly. Now for me, what I do is grab yourself a nice little handful of corn like that and I'll go siphle through and immediately, with that salted caramel corn, there's loads of the pieces that I want. Now that little piece there, there's obviously some bigger pieces and obviously when you're carp fishing or the fish are having a go, they can be as, you know, they can be just as important as the small bits. But that little bit there, you see that little bit there is absolutely, I mean to me, that is the perfect piece of corn. And you, you struggle to find that in some tins of corn, but with obviously the, the, the Sonu corn, that's what it's all about is that quality. So I'm just gonna get that little bit there and show you. That bit there, look at that. It's absolutely ideal. If I put that on my little nail, like that, you'll see it. It's probably half the size of my little fingernail. And again, when you put that on a 16, you know, if you're going to venues, F1s, skimmers, smaller carp, you just want those little bits of bait like that, absolutely deadly. So make sure you buy some corn, which you've got that option of putting those little bits on. It's absolutely deadly. Something you've got to be aware of when you're fishing with sweet corn is actually putting the skin on. So what I mean by that is you actually push the internal bits of the corn out, the, the, cur the kernel. So you actually, actually get the kernel and push it out. And that tin corn, that salted caramel corn is perfect for that. You get some nice little chunks like that and you can push it out. And you'll see the bits all come out like that. Get rid of them and then just hook the skin. And the difference in that is huge. Not just in the summer, but you can also use this in the winter. So use it like a bit of bread. Because we all know bread is absolutely deadly when you're sort of just dobbing along in the winter looking for an odd carp. Some venues you go to, you're not allowed to use bread. So it's just a great alternative using a skin like that of a piece of corn. Just, you know, bear it in mind, not just for carp fishing, but for bream as well. I had massive success on that the weekend. I actually was getting a skimmer in Breen quite regularly and I thought I'd just try a little bit of skin on and the bites went from just a couple of minutes to literally 
hitting the bottom in a few seconds. I was getting my bites. So try that. Great way. Get on that corn skin. Definitely catches a lot more fish. A couple of ways of feeding corn. We all know now, especially during the summer months, when you go to a venue and the carp are really crafty down the edge, are really hard to catch, you know, when they're tailing up, that's when you can put corn in. Corn is very, very heavy. So it goes down, the fish follow it down, stay on the bottom, which obviously then enables you to catch the fish rather than foul looking the fish. And to do that, you can obviously introduce that in big pots or you can introduce it with small pots. So depending on what venue you're going, size of fish, you know, do you have to put a big pot in? But try both. It can make a massive difference on the day. A little pot like that, you can probably get 30 pieces of corn in. A lot of venues I go to, that is a great way of just fishing for an odd bite. When you're going in, you're getting bites nice and quick. The difference with corn stops foul looking massively. So if you're going to a venue and you're getting problems with foul looking, just feed corn. You can put a bit of hemp with it. You can put a bit of meat with it. Some days I go fishing when I'm fishing short with meat. I introduce corn as well. And the difference on certain days, you can just cut the meat out and just get the fish onto corn. It is massive in foul, you know, stops the foul looking of fish. It's just a great bait. Obviously catapulting. You know, when I'm fishing long on the pole especially, I love to catapult corn. Especially when you're getting lots of bites, you know, when you don't really want to be picking up a big pot. You, you don't want a little cap pot on it. It's just wasting time. A recent match, I loose fed three tins of corn and caught 80 pound of skimmers. And I mean skimmers, not bream. I caught a lot of fish. It was just too slow cad potting. The only time I picked my big pot up was when it went off a bit funny. I put like half a pot of corn in, maybe do something else for 15 minutes and then go back on it. But then I was catapulting. It's so, so no, important. I have a nice catapult like that. Again, that quality corn that Son you do, it's great because it's very, very similar in size. So actually catapulting it like 13 to 16 metres is an absolute easy. So I've probably got like 15, 20 grains in there. And it all goes round an area of like a dustbin lid. Mega, mega important, especially when you're catching lots of fish. Even on a waggler, you know, catapulting on a waggler during the winter months, it's absolutely deadly sweet corn. Give it a go, different ways of feeding corn there, and it will make a massive difference to your catch rate. Another great tip about sweet corn, which I do a lot, and people don't really see it, I'll go to Tamar, I'll go to like venues, especially when I'm catching lots of skimmers in bream, is chopping sweet corn up. So what I do, when I'm chopping, while I put some worms in, I put some sweet corn in as well, you can chop it, separately it's up to you so what i do is get yourself a nice pair of scissors i've got some double scissors there get an, an, uh, just a spare pot that i take you want a round little pot like that really put a nice dose of corn in there like that and then use your scissors now you can do this separately like i said or you can mix it in with your worms or whatever other baits you're actually putting in you know you can some people even chop maggots and you can chop them. It takes a bit of chopping, to be honest, because there's quite a lot of grains of corn in there. And you end up with all those little bits of skin. When you actually mix that in with your ground bait, or you have a chopped worm mix, it's something that I do a lot. And I probably don't really talk about it that much, but it's really, really important. When I go bream fishing and in matches on, norm, you know, when I'm fishing a traditional feeder, I do this all the time. Because it's just nice to, like, put that through the cage or on the pole. And we all know sometimes the fishing might be a little bit slow, but as the day goes on, you can put a little bit of corn on the hook and you end up with a nice mixture like that. So you've got lots and lots of little bits of corn. I mean, you can carry on chopping and chopping and chopping so these bits get a bit smaller. But for me, that's about right. I can introduce that through a cage feeder or if I want to like ball it on the pole line. It's just a great way of getting those little flecks of yellow in with your bait. One really important thing about corn is you can hair rig it. Now, obviously some people might hair rig it on the pole. If they're fishing long up to an island or they're getting lots and lots of bites, hair rigging can be deadly. But for me, hair rigging probably comes into it more when I'm fishing a traditional feeder. So like a cage feeder or a window feeder or something like that and you want to be fishing with corn on the hook. I think it's absolutely deadly. Now, it's nice and simple. I've just got a 16 kkm on there and I've got a rapid stop. 
Now you can buy them pre-tied or you can actually tie them yourself. And I want to fish a single bit of corn. So I've probably got about, I would say 15 mil from the bottom of the hook to the actual rapid stop. And that's normally perfect for a single piece of corn. Now, what I like to do is get a nice chunky bit of corn. I put it through the cut off end first. So push the rapid stop in, keep everything nice and straight. Push it out through the round bit of the corn. Get the baiting needle out, let that rapid stop bend over. Now look at that for presentation. Absolutely ideal. That's when I like to use them slightly bigger pieces of corn because they're a little bit tougher and obviously you're fishing for probably quality fish on a feeder or on the pole. But don't never forget, hair rigging corn has its day and absolutely 100% you need that when you're fishing with a cage feeder for bream and skimmers. Just fired a bit of corn in over the catapult. Oh, what's that? <laughs> we've had some, we've had some big bream. We've had some carp. I don't know what that is, but it feels pretty heavy. I haven't got a clue what that is. It might be, I don't know. It, it's actually nodding like a tench. Don't tell me why. Don't ask me why. But I've caught quite a lot of tent. Look at the bubbles, it's just hit the bottom there. It actually went off like an eel. Well, just fired like eight pieces of corn over the top of the catty. Seen a couple of bubbles come up, literally within like a minute. That's a good fish, whatever it is. But we've had all sorts today. Skimmers, carp, cruisians. And that's what's the beauty about corn. I've had no problems in foul looking. Oh, that's either a massive car. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. That is, an, that is a massive tench. That's got to be my PB tench, that. And I'm not fishing overly heavy as well. I'm only 13 and a 16 GPM. Oh, don't go in there. Come on, baby. I don't want to lose that. Oh, yes. <laughs> I want an 18 inch landing net for a tench. Jesus. That is an absolute stunning tench, that. And just get the hook out of him because he's well up. I've just put a little bit more, I put a little bit more line on the bottom because the wind's got up. Let me just get that. That was on one of those little tiny chunky bits of corn. That has to be my biggest tench I've ever caught in my life, I reckon. There's a little bit of dry grass on him. Let's get that off. Well, I'm going to turn him around the right way so you can see him. That's got to be six pound, I reckon. It's got to be one of the biggest tench I've ever caught. Oh, look at that. What an absolute stunning fish that is. Absolutely, that's made my day, that. No matter what happens now, we could have a thunderstorm, it wouldn't matter. Because the catch a tent like that, look at the condition of him. Absolutely awesome. Well, it doesn't get better, does it? Feeding a bit of corn, you know, nice and simple. 16 hook, three pound bottom, little 4B14 float, tapping in a bit of corn and also loose feeding it don't get easier, does it? Let's get him back because that is absolutely stunning. <laughs> 